Hello and welcome to today's science lesson. So first of all, guys, can we all turn to wave and say a big hello to our friends on camera? Hello. hello. And we'll begin by doing our meditation sequence. So I will sit down, take two fingers, find our heart center, left hand on our laps and close our eyes. When you're ready, guys, you can open your eyes and come back to the room. Excellent. And next, we'll do our stretch sequence. So let's stand up and push in our chairs. And let's begin by stretching up high to the sky. High as we can. And then we go down to touch our toes. Up high one more time. And this time, can we go tippy toe high? And let's have a wave while we're there. Excellent, guys. And then back down to touch your toes once more. And I'll stand up straight. Hands on hips. Let's have a wiggle side to side. Wiggle side to side. Stop. Another wiggle side to side. Stop. Forwards, backwards. Forwards, backwards. Forwards, backwards. And stop. And next we can go round and round. Round and round. Round and round. And stop. And then back the other way. Round and round the other way. Round and round. And stop. And to finish, guys, we'll have a shake. So arms and legs, shake it out. Shake it out. Arms and legs. A good shake. And to finish, we will do five claps. Excellent, guys. Have a seat. So in our previous science lesson, we were looking at a word called properties. Can we say that word together? Properties. And let's write it on the board. R-O-P-E-R-T-I-E-S. Properties. Now, what properties means is the way that various materials and objects are made. 
the way they look, the way they feel, and the way they react to pressure. For example, if we try to bend them or stretch them. So the full title of the lesson was Properties of Materials. Well done, well remembered. A T E R I A L S. So let's say that phrase all together. Properties of materials. Yes. Now who can remember, thinking back to the last lesson, some of the different properties that we've learned already? See-through. See Excellent. Yes. Some materials are see-through. We can look through them. So that is one property. See-through. Now, can anybody remember the fancy word for see-through, beginning with T? No. Staying with see-through for a moment, the word beginning with T that describes see-through. Transparent. Yes, if something is see-through, we can also say it is transparent. Now, guys, thinking about any other properties. Soft. Yes. Soft is a good one. Some materials are soft. If we squeeze them, they will bend and they will go into the shape we squeeze. That means they are soft. S-O-F-T. Other materials aren't soft. What's the opposite of soft? If we try to squeeze them, they will not move. They are <laughs> hard. Yes, we have soft and the opposite of soft is hard. Oh, gee. Remember when we did the experiment by scratching objects. And if an object left a scratch on another object, that showed which one was hard and which one was soft. Any other property? Flexible. Flexible. Yes. If we bend and if we stretch things, some things move. And that means they are flexible. But the opposite of flexible, some things, if we try to bend them, they won't move. That means they are r r rigid. Yes. R I G I D. And then a final property that we've learned so far was in the last lesson, the experiment. Remember, when we try to stretch things and then we let go. And if they stretch and if they go back, they are elastic yeah it was demonstrating elasticity so that is a type of property too e l a s t i c elastic or elasticity okay so now guys let's read them together see through or transparent soft hard Flexible, rigid, and elasticity. Okay, so now we're going to have a little quiz. We've got some of the properties of materials on the board. I'm going to name a material. And can you guys guess which property each of the materials have? So our first material, glass. What do we think about glass? Is glass soft? No? See-through. See Perfect. This property, see-through, we can look through things. And if I say the material glass, we know that glass is see-through. Because what are windows made of, guys? Windows are made of glass. So there's an example of an object made from a material that is see-through. Okay, now who can give me the material that is soft? Rubber. rubber. Excellent answer. Rubber is soft. Rubber can bend and rubber can stretch. R, U, B, B, E, R. Now who can think of an object made of rubber? Eraser. I was about to say, maybe some of you have one on your desks now. Is a rubber see-through? 
No, a robe is soft and it is an eraser. Okay, but now looking at hard. Wood is a better... Both answers are correct. I heard wood and I heard metal. But wood is the better answer because rigid is the answer for metal. We will go with hard for wood. Even though metal is hard too. But the difference is, if wood gets wet, it will soften. But as metal gets wet, it won't soften. So metal stays rigid. But we can say that wood is hard. W O O D. Now who can tell me something made of wood? Table. Good answer. If we have a table at home and we have our dinner, it's no good if it falls down. It needs to be hard. So if it's made of wood, it's a good example. Now how about flexible? A rubber band, yes. So, what material is a rubber band? Rubber, rubber yes. You see, we've got rubber as soft, but it goes to show that some materials can display more than one property. For example, glass. Is glass hard? Yes. yes. Glass can be see-through, and it can also be hard. Rubber can be soft, and rubber is also flexible. So who can give me another example of a rubber object that is flexible? A rubber band. From the last lesson, we did the experiment with the rubber band. E A N D. Now thinking of rigid, what material did we say? Metal. Not clay. Clay is not rigid. If I drop my cup on the floor, what will happen? It will smash. If I drop metal on the floor, it will just make a loud noise. It won't smash because metal is rigid. And if we try to stretch or bend metal, it's very hard because it's a very soft, yes. You can do it with your rulers a little bit, but larger pieces of metal are harder. And who's got an example of a metal rigid ruler? R U L E R. Excellent. And now on to our final property. The test that we did last time. Elasticity. elasticity. I heard clay. Is clay elastic? If I get my cup and I try to stretch it, will it go back? No. We're looking at elasticity. And we have our answer already. Rubber, rubber band. So it shows how the rubber band, because remember, first test, is it flexible? Can we stretch it? The answer was yes. And then, did it return back to its original shape? Yes, it did. So that shows el el elasticity too. Band. E A N D. Now this is a good example of a recap of what we've learned so far. We've got properties and the different materials and objects that display these properties. So one more time guys, see through glass, such as windows, soft rubber, like an eraser, hard wood, like a table. Flexible, if we stretch it, a rubber band. Rigid is something metal, like a ruler. And then finally, elasticity, like flexible, if we stretch the rubber band, it goes back into our original shape. So one final time, guys, elasticity, rubber band. That was brilliant. Very well remembered, guys. And what we're doing in today's lesson, we're going to move on. We're not looking at properties of materials so much anymore. We're looking at uses. Because the different objects with the different properties have different uses. 
And what we need to do is decide which objects are best used for different things. So what we've got now is a PowerPoint presentation for our students to observe, listen to, and also practice speaking about the uses of materials. So let's turn to look at our TV screen, please, guys. So let's take a look at our PowerPoint presentation, Uses, uses of, materials. of Materials, Lesson 1. Yes, and in our picture here, we can see lots of different objects. Now, all of these different objects are made of different materials, and they all have different uses. For example, here we have a table. And the table is made of wood. Yes. Here, cutlery. And what material can you see here? What material do you think the cutlery is made of, guys? Oh, metal. metal. Excellent, yes. Here we have a bucket and a bin. What materials are the bucket and bin made of? Plastic, Plastic. yes. <coughs> So you see how different objects have different uses based on the materials. And here we have plates made of clay. And these are used for eating. Different materials are chosen to make certain objects because their properties Match their uses. Copper is used to make electrical wires because it is a good electrical conductor. Yes. Copper is a type of metal, and you can see it here. This is the copper. All the wires that we have on electrical equipment, they have this on the inside, something known as copper wires, because the electricity can pass through the copper. It's what's known as a conductor. But then, on the outside of the wires, plastic is used to wrap the copper wires because it is a good electrical insulator. Now what that means is, if we just have the copper wires with the electricity, if we try to touch them, we would get electric shock. That's dangerous. So what we have to do is we have to put plastic coating on the outside of the copper to protect us. Because now, if I try to touch the wire, I don't get the shock. Because plastic is a good insulator. If we touch the metal, we get the shock. But the plastic protects us. So different materials, different uses. Wool is used to make winter clothes. Wool keeps us warm by trapping body heat. Yes. So in the winter, when the weather is cold, we like to wear winter clothes. Who wears a hat like this? No? How about a scarf like this? No? Even in the cold? When the weather's cold, I like to wear a wool hat and a wool scarf. Because what wool does, it keeps our body heat inside. It keeps us warm. So wool has the use of warming us. Rubber is used to make hair bands. And most girls in this classroom now, if I look around, you have your hair bands. 
and the hair bands will contain rubber. It can be stretched to tie hair and hold it in place. Rubber is elastic. It can be stretched to tie hair and hold it in place. Yes, remember the last lesson when we had the rubber band and we tested elasticity. It can be stretched and then go back into place. So girls, if you check your hair bands later, you will see rubber. Because what you do is you stretch it and then use it to keep your hair in place. So it stretches and then goes back. And that's elasticity. Now what item can you see here in the picture? Metal. Metal is the material and the item or the object frying pan. And what food can you see? Egg. Yes, it's frying an egg. But there are two different types of materials here. The body of the frying pan is made of metal. Metal is a heat conductor. Yes, metal is good for cooking things because it transfers the heat. So when we put the frying pan on a hot stove, it will cook the egg because metal will transfer the heat. It's a heat conductor. But the handle... The handle of the frying pan is made of plastic. Plastic is a heat insulator. Yes. What would happen if the handle of the frying pan was made of metal and you tried to touch it? Very hot, yes. We can't use metal for the handle because we can't touch it. It would be too hot. But plastic is not a heat conductor. Plastic is a heat insulator. So that means it protects us from the heat, which allows us to hold the frying pan. And similarly, wood. Now this thing here is called spatula. The spatula used for cooking is made of wood. Wood is a heat insulator. Yes, similarly, similarly to plastic, they will insulate us from heat, which means it's okay to touch. But not metal. Metal is a conductor and will make things hot. So you can see how the different materials with different properties have different uses. Any questions, guys? Excellent, very well done. <laughs> Welcome back to class. We hope your students enjoyed the PowerPoint presentation to give an understanding of the different materials with their different properties and how they have different uses. And it's interesting to see that sometimes a single object has different materials for different uses, such as the frying pan, which had the metal body for cooking, but the plastic handle for holding. So it shows how a combination of materials go towards making particular objects. And we've got a flash exercise coming up soon. But first of all, guys, time for our stretch sequence. So let's stand up and push in our chairs. And for this stretch sequence, we'll begin by jogging on the spot. Stop. Walking on the spot. Stop. Turn left. Turn left again. Turn left. And left. Hello. Jogging on the spot. 
quickly. Stop jogging on the spot. Quickly. Stop walking on the spot. Arms in the air. Turn right. Turn right again. Turn right. And right. Hello. Hands on head. Hands down. And please sit down, guys. And now it's time for our flashcards exercise part of the lesson. So teachers, what you need to do is print out all of the flash sheets for this particular activity and place a bit of tape to the backs of each one. And then for the vocabulary, because what we've got are four different uses, we can introduce them first to class and use them for four columns and for our students to practice speaking. So ready guys, first thing we have is four words, the four uses of materials. So, the first use of some materials, electrics. Okay, some materials are good for use for electrics. So that's our first column, which we'll place over here. And then we've learned that some materials are good for cooking. cooking. Yes, not the same materials. We can't use the same material that we want to cook with for electricity, but different materials have different uses. So our next column, cooking. Then we have wearing. Now what type of things do we wear, guys? Clothes. So have a think, what materials are our clothes made of? When we see the pictures, try to recognize. And then one more use that we have. Looking. Some materials are good for looking, which is different to the different ones. So we've got four particular uses, and what we'll do is we'll place these words on the board for four columns. So let's practice speaking one more time. Electrics. Electric. Cooking. Cooking. Wearing. Wearing. Looking. Looking. And what we're going to do now is ask our students to close their eyes. When they wake up, they will have a flashcard on one of their desks. That student needs to come forward Tell us what is on their flashcard and then decide which of the four uses is best suited to that object and the materials and properties it's made from. So let's see who can go first. Okay, and our first student today is Lakgao. So Lakgao, what's on your flashcard? It's looking, but what can we see? It's a window. What's the window made of? Glass. glass. And what's the best, what do you think is the best use? Do we wear glass? No. Do we cook with glass? No. Is glass good for electrics? No. no, glass is good for looking. So ready guys, all together, glass window, glass window. looking. Looking. Perfect, Lakau, very well done. Big round of applause for Lakau. But let's have a look at another flashcard and see if there's a different use. Okay, now it's Pangpon's turn. So Pangpon, come and join me at the front of class. Now what can we see on Pangpon's flashcard? Thinking back to the PowerPoint presentation. Not rubber bands. These aren't rubber bands. Remember, electrical things they have Wires. Wires. But Blackgow, a minute ago, you said something. What type of material do not we think? Not rubber, beginning with P. Plastic. plastic. So what do we think? The plastic wires are better. Do we wear them? No. Do we cook with them? No. Electrics. Well done, Bang Pun. You see, so we can say plastic, plastic. wires. For electrics. 
Bang pun, can you say? Plastic wires. Plastic wires. Electrics. Electric. Perfect. High five, big round of applause for Bang pun. <laughs> so teachers, you can see the activity we're doing in our classroom now. You can pause the video and play on with your own students for around the next 10 minutes or so. And remember, use a different student for each flashcard, but try to have the entire class practice speaking together. And we're going to carry on playing here now. Okay, so now it's Prao's turn with the flashcards. So Prao, bring your flashcard to the front of class, please. And show it to your friends. What can we see here, guys? A boy. And what else can we see? Clothes. What type of clothes? Excellent. Remember... We have a wool jumper. Now, what's the use of a wool jumper? Do we cook with a wool jumper? Wearing. It's a type of material for clothes. Well done, Prow. Reach as high as you can. <laughs> so we can say wool jumper wearing. Because wool is a good material to keep our body heat in, especially in cold weather. Wool is very good for wearing. So, that was excellent. High five. Big round of applause for Prel, please, guys. So, can you begin to see? Look at the different types of materials and the different uses because they've all got different properties. Now, for the next student, who can it be? Now, it's Down's turn. So down, join me at the front of class. Now let's see if we can remember what this is from the PowerPoint presentation. Again, it's a pan, yes. It's full title, frying pan. Now remember the frying, <laughs> the frying pan has metal body and plastic handle. But what do we use a frying pan for? Cooking. Cooking, yes. Excellent. So we can say metal, metal. Plastic, plastic, frying pan, frying pan. for cooking. Excellent, Down. Very well done. Big round of applause for Down, please, guys. Okay, and we'll carry on going with our flashcards. Now it's Pat's turn to bring his flashcard to the front of class. So Pat, come and join me at the front. Okay, guys, can anybody remember from the PowerPoint, what's this material? I'll give you a clue. It's metal, but what type of metal did we learn about? Beginning with C. C, -c, -c Copper. Yes. Now what was the copper used for? Electrics, very good. Remember when we learnt about the wires, the plastic on the outside, but what's on the inside? Metal. metal. And the type of metal is <laughs> copper. So Pat, we can place it here and we can say together, copper, copper. wires, wires. <laughs> electrics. Because the copper on the inside, the plastic on the outside, makes the wires for electrics. Pat, excellent. High five, big round of applause for Pat. And now, our next look. And now it's Pak Bung's turn. So Pak Bung, come and join me at the front of class. Now, what can we see on Pak Bung's flashcard? Sunglasses. Not sunglasses. Eyeglasses. Normal eyeglasses. Sunglasses are the dark ones to protect us from the sun. These are normal eyeglasses. Now, what material are the eyeglasses made from? Glass. glass. The clue is in the name, glasses. So what use do we think the glasses are for? They're for looking. So, Pak Bung, we can place eyeglasses for looking. Because, remember what we said about glass, it's see-through. So, that means it's good 
for looking. So one more time, guys. Glasses. Glasses. Looking. looking. Pakung, brilliant. High five and a big round of applause for Pakung. <laughs> so you can see how different types of objects have the same types of uses. Window and glasses are for looking. But what about the next slide? And the next flashcard is with Nadia. So Nadia, let's bring this flashcard to the front of class. And let's see if we can see what's on Nadia's flashcard. Clothes. clothes. What type of clothes? Remember the material? Wool. Wool. Yes. You can see these are what we call winter clothes. When the weather is cold, we like to wear a woolly hat and a woolly scarf because wool protects our body with the heat. So what type of use do we have for wool? Well, wearing, yes, we wear. So altogether, woolly hat, woolly scarf for wearing. Nadia, excellent. High five, big round of applause for Nadia, guys. And we've got one flashcard left. So which students will it be? And the flashcard is now with Net. So Net, come and join me at the front. So what can we see, guys? Any ideas? It's for cooking. Almost pot. We've already got frying pan. This is what we call sauce pan. Yes, so what use is the saucepan for? Cooking. Cooking, yes. So net we can place here. And once again, can you see how it's metal and plastic? So metal body, plastic handle for cooking. Excellent, net. So one more time. <laughs> metal body. Plastic handle for cooking. Brilliant. Well done, Net. High five. Big round of applause for Net. So now that we've got all of our different objects on the board, you notice the different uses, how they all share similarities. So let's practice speaking one more time. Eyeglasses. Eyeglasses. Window. Window. For looking. Scarf, Scarf, hat, hat jumper, jumper wearing, wearing, saucepan, saucepan frying, frying pan, pan for cooking, for cooking. Copper, copper, plastic, plastic make, the wires, make the wires for electrics. For electrics. Excellent, guys. Very well done. <laughs> and now it's time for our worksheet part of the lesson. So teachers, make sure every student in your class gets their own worksheet. And what we've got is a list of sentences regarding the objects and the uses that we learnt about in the PowerPoint presentation. But importantly, each sentence is missing a word. So those words that are missing are in our vocabulary box. So we're asking our students to read each sentence and decide which word is missing and write it in the correct place. But what's the first thing to do, guys? Write your names on top. Write your names on top. So let's give our students around 10 minutes for this activity, and then we can practice speaking together at the end. So, Ned, this one's for you. Thank you. You're welcome. Pat, for you. Thank you. Nadia, for you. Thank you. You're welcome. Chu, this one's Thank for you. you. You're welcome. Yeah. Down, here's yours. Thank you. You're welcome. Plo, this one's for you. You're welcome. And Pak Bung for you. Bang Pon for you. Black Gal for you. So guys, names on top and then have a read of the sentences and see if you can figure out which word is missing. Okay, so copper. Electrics. Electrical. 
Why is? Why is? Because it is to make utensils. Now, what does the if we hold on to a frying pan, what does the plastic protect us from? Protects us from heat, not to be too hot. So, it plastic is a good heat insulator. The handle. Pan of what are they made of, guys? Not metal. The bodies. The bodies are made of metal, but the handles. Plastic. Yes, they're made of plastic because they're good heat. Insulators. To wrap wires electrical not conductor the metal is the copper is the electrical conductor the plastic is the electrical insulator that means we can touch the wires it protects us it insulates us from the electrics so insulator So now, let's take a look at our winter clothes. Jumper, hat, scarf. What are they made of? Wool. Yes, remember the special type of fabric that keeps us warm? Wool. Winter clothes are made from wool. Does anybody know where we get wool from? Sheep. The sheep's bodies have the fur or the hair known as wool. Sheep and lambs. That's where we get wool from. We shave the sheep to make wool. Okay. So the next one. Water can be used for everything because, because it, it can, can be. be Pakpung. Stretched. Yes, well done, guys. Stretched. Wool. So, wool for our winter clothes net. Number five. Okay, what are our winter clothes made of? Wool. Yes, wool. An elastic can be stretched. Hands made of so the body of frying. We know the we know the handle is made of plastic. What is the body made of? Metal. Yes. Because we can't touch the metal. The body is used for cooking. It is hot. The plastic is for the handle, so we can hold. Okay. Welcome back to class. We hope your students enjoyed the worksheet activity, where they had to complete the sentences by choosing the correct word from the vocabulary box and writing it in each of the spaces. And what we're going to do now is we're going to practice speaking one final time together, guys. So ready? Copper, Copper is used, used to make electrical wires, electrical wires. Because, because 
It is a good electrical conductor. Yes. Wood is used to make cooking utensils because it is a good heat insulator. The handle of frying pans are made of plastic because it is a good heat insulator. Plastic is used to wrap copper wires because it is a good electrical insulator. And now the clothes. Wool is used to make winter clothes because it keeps us warm by trapping our body heat. Yes, woolen clothes keep our body heat inside so we stay warm. Rubber can be used for hair bands because it can be stretched to keep our hair in place. Like all of the girls in my class now are wearing rubber hair bands. The body of frying pans is made of metal because it is a good heat conductor. And finally, rubber is elastic and can be stretched before returning to its original shape. Yes, remember the experiment, guys. With rubber, we stretch it and let go. It returns back to its original shape. Therefore, it's elastic. And that was excellent. Very well done. <laughs> and that's all we've got time for today. So we hope you've enjoyed the lesson and found it interesting. And now understand how different materials with their different properties have different uses. And we'll see you again soon for the next lesson. So can we turn to wave and say goodbye, guys? Bye-bye. See you again next time.